you do this bit where you separate your left brain and your right mm -hmm. brain, and they're fighting for dominance. And in the end, you come up with this solution that comedy is going to save you. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? And, and I was curious about of me. If, if there was a moment and if you remember the moment where you're like, oh, comedy is the thing I should be doing. It's the thing that reconciles whatever is, you know, whoever I am. Well, it's interesting. It's like, and that bit was really like, I saw David Hasselhoff, a performance of him doing Jekyll and Hyde, the musical. I saw it online. And it's him being like, come on, Jekyll. I won't do that. And it's all these light switches. And it was just beautiful. I um, love that so, David Hasselhoff is the influence. It really was. It really was. I'll, I, you know, I'll take from anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, like, there was, mm, I liked making a show. You know what I mean? I really liked building a show. So sometimes I, I attended to the themes of the show and the themes of the show weren't necessarily, necessarily the themes of my life. Like, is it 100% true that comedy saved me is the thing I should be doing? Maybe. Is it cool for the guy on stage to affirm the exact thing he's doing at the end of the bit? That he's maybe that worked. So I didn't really care about you know you know you know like sure. There was a for at least a while it was like I love theater like that that was my first love really and that's what I thought of my shows as because every other special that I'd seen were were it's basically hours of material that are worked out in clubs fifteen minutes at a time or whatever and then for the special they put all these lights up and they do the special you know and I was like I, I want to do a show that you can't. You can't practice in a club. It makes no sense in a club. The whole meaning of the show is that it's in front of 1,200 people and it's on this sort of scale. I remember going to a show of a very famous comedian that we don't talk about anymore um, when in like 2008, 9, 10 or something like that. It was a 3,000 seat theater in Boston. And the comedian was just this tall in a little spotlight and I'm in the back and I'm going like, what the f is this? Like, I should just be listening to this on a CD or something. Which I'm not bashing that. I love the pure art form of stand-up stripped down. I just can't do it. But I thought, like, if I can ever get to a point where I can play theaters, I'm going to use this space. I'm going to use. Look at all these. I'm be, look, look at those. Look at that rig up there. I mean, look at this. Like, like this place could be bumping. And well, you can hey. do something you can't do with a concert because, like, a concert you're all screaming and yelling. You all know the words, but you know, it's theater. It really is theater. Hey, folks. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you want to see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.